Cars. Oh. Remember in school? My teacher never looked like that, by the way. No. My teacher, none of my <laughs> teachers looked like that. I would have come to school more often. Okay, I'll stop those. In school, we learned the three R's were reading, writing, and arithmetic. So not anymore. For you in the job hunt, it's research, research, relevancy, and resiliency. By the way, you can take notes. You can just ask Martin for the, uh, for the PowerPoint later, but it's entirely up to you. All right. What are these four things? Research. You've got to know. Uh, earlier, I asked somebody if you have a clear idea of the job you're seeking. Let's drill down a bit. How many of you, if I asked you to tell me your three best, most marketable skills, could tell me right now? Raise your hand. Very good. That's even better. So you've got to start again with your... Your three, not, not five, not seven. It just helps to build a mini skeleton here. Three is kind of a magic number. These your are three? Canadians. <laughs> That's why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll translate that later. So when you have to have three skills in, in your mind that you're looking for. Again, or you won't recognize the job when you get there. And again, you can't convince an employer to hell you, hell, hire you if you yourself don't know what your most marketable three points are. So it starts with you. It's this is a bit of internal research. But you've got to know your most marketable, most valuable three skills. And a quick way to answer this is to get a stopwatch if you don't know now. You could go through a three or a four day seminar with graphs and pie charts and uh, maybe electrocardiograms. You know, what you, you, you may come out at the end, it's like sausage. You may find out. But I tell you how to do it. Go home tonight with a stopwatch and just write the answer to this question. What three things would I do all day every day if I weren't getting paid? And your first three answers is an 80% likelihood they'll be correct. And you can fudge them a bit, but if you ask yourself and your first answer is, it's like taking a test. You trust your instincts. And then you take these three skills and you go to Monster or wherever and you just see what the demand is, uh, which leads to number two. If you play with these three skills, go to Monster Career Builder. Workopolis, I believe, has uh, connections to some, to some websites. But see what the market is. If you're looking for uh, you know, baseball, marketing, and uh, speaking, maybe it's one set of skills. If it's uh, in change speaking to communications or change speaking to training, play with these three skills and see what the market is and see if you're on the right track or not. So that's, Kevin, don't free. you also want to take a look at you know, making sure that the skills that you want to take to the market and sell are actually something that someone will pay you the kind of money you're looking for? Yeah, exactly. Because years ago, years ago uh, guys that could, that could format a three and a half inch diskette, remember those years? Those guys were IT. They were important and they were very, very expensive. Now, you know, when was the last time you used a three and a half inch desk get? So exactly. you've got to make sure the skills that you want to sell, there's a market for them and that you're going to get the kind of remuneration that you're looking for. I know guys that are still looking for jobs at $150,000 a year to do Java. Well, you know, there's software now that just grinds Java out the other end or something very similar to it. So those skills don't sell that well anymore. Yeah, number three, problems in your market. This is easier to answer than you think. Um, Again, you may know the answer, but if you don't, just ask yourself this. Picture your future boss and what keeps him or her up at night. That is the answer to the question. Whatever keeps your next boss up at night is the biggest problem in your market right now. If you find a way to solve it or help him or her solve it, then you're, on, you're much closer to your next position. What's keeping those guys awake at night? Yeah, and the last piece of that puzzle, number four, is, you, oh, by the way, you've got to get all these right. It's not like one out of four or 50% you pass them. <laughs> and you become a doctor because you wrote the exam. Mm -hmm. You've got to get all four right. And the fourth one is critical. In marketing, peop in marketing people know it's the list that they pick. Okay, you have to know who's got the power, not the title. Who's got the power to hire you? If you're a director, it's not your boss. Okay, it's your boss's boss in another company that's going to hire you. Because the guy that you would report to, you don't know how sound he is or she <laughs> is. You don't know whether they hire B's and C's on purpose when you're an A, in which case you're an A and you're, you have no value to yourself anymore after you've been turned down by three of these guys not knowing that you know, there's no way they're going to hire you because you're going to make them look good. So you always have to go wherever you want to, whatever title you pick, you have to go two levels up and go after that individual. And we'll talk about how you find those people. It's, uh, it's, not, actually all that, it's mm -hmm. not actually all that difficult. Yeah, a quick variation on that. If I ask you... Um, you're going to open a restaurant, and you can pick any food, any location in Canada, any kind of cuisine. You want to make it a hit restaurant. What are you going to do? Some guy would say, I want an Italian restaurant downtown. I want an Indian restaurant uh, on this street corner. And the correct answer is what you want is a starving crowd. Because then what you're selling and how you're selling it becomes sort of immaterial. 
So your starving crowd, that's the people who can hire you. If you're looking for a starving crowd and you've got anything appetizing, they're going to want to talk to you. So find a starving crowd.